What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. What is good? We're back with another edition of the... We going with the super terrific fantasy hour? I don't think we're going to make it an hour tonight. It might be the super um, terrific ha ha uh, fantasy half hour. Yeah, but either way, no big co tonight. Jay Wayne, what's up? Uh, ready to ready to talk about uh, that that vice presidential debate that happened last night? You ready to go? Should we get into who? Should we do some fact checking or anything like I will, that? Uh, I will do nothing of the sort. After the first one, I've washed my hands of everything. Just kidding. Sticking to football. Football, which football's on right now. This is sacrifice. We couldn't we couldn't get on the mics last night, but we didn't want to skip this week. So we're, yep, we're getting yep. it in during this uh Bears Bucks game, which is a decent Thursday night game. Decent matchup. Yep. But I took the under. We'll see how it pans out. I got forty five. I like that. I like that. Um all right. So a couple of things. Well, obviously, a lot of things happen, but a couple of bigger things happen. Uh, first stop, let's stop in Washington, D.C., not the state. Uh, right. <laughs> we all know there's just a bunch of good-for-nothing liberals out there. Yeah. <laughs> Burning down <laughs> cities. <laughs> Ain't no need to stop there, Bo. Yeah. You couldn't pay me enough. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's own some libs. Come on. Uh, well, Dwayne Haskins has been owned. Mm -hmm. The boys said, you're not even getting number two on the depth chart. You're going all the way back to number three. We're going to put Alex one leg Smith who, God damn it. I do not want to see that man play any football. Can we please like, what are we doing? Please do not put him out on the field. I get it. I'm, I'm so happy for that man. I'm so Absolutely. happy for Alex Smith. I'm so happy that he has both limbs still. Right. And can so walk. that he's alive. Like, uh, just, if we could just not put him out there, that would be great. Um, but Dwayne Haskins gets benched after four games. They told him beforehand that he needed to get his shit together. And then uh, old boy said he was testing him on that uh, gold, fourth and gold throw, and he didn't throw it in the end zone. But I sl slowed it down and saw multiple people on the internet showing that there wasn't even people in the end zone, blah, yada, yada, yada. You know what? Dwayne Haskins hasn't played well. He hasn't looked great. There has been glimpses of him being good. Do I think Dwayne Haskins good? I don't know. I did like Dwayne Haskins coming out of college. I wasn't like, yeah, Dwayne Haskins is the best, but I didn't hate him. He's kind of in the Mitchell Trubisky territory, although yeah, I thought he was much better than he was, where only really one year of playing college football. Um, you throw him out there last year, Gruden clearly didn't want him. Jay Gruden, when he was the head coach of the Redskins, and the, that was an owner draft pick. The Redskins are the, one of the most, at least top five most dysfunctional franchises ever, uh, at least currently. And you mean the Washington just, football team? Yes, yeah, sorry, Washington football team. Uh, I, I used to say the skins are going to skin, but now I got to say that the 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 Washington the football, football team is going to Washington football team, basically. Yeah, you can't even say they're going to the football team's going to football, but right. But they're not going to. Um, they're just going to digress. No, like no, he's, this I, is only I, his second year, right? This is his second year in yeah, the league. Twenty three years year old. He, he didn't start last year. He got thrown in and out a bunch of times. That team was awful. The organization's awful, um, and I'm just terrible. You know, like I said, he finally gets some starts. It's a weird off season. Joe Burrow had a weird off season too. Herbert had a weird off season too. They both come in and they can play. Listen, I understand you saying, "Hey, look it, they're out there. They can play. You can see that they can play." We've also thought that Baker Mayfield was the best thing since sliced bread, and then we had since had to walk that back because you saw a couple of really good games from him. So I'm not saying that Joe Burrow and Herbert aren't great, but We've seen this song and dance multiple times, depending on how long you've watched football. They got into, would I say, better situations? Yeah, I guess so. It's a, it just seems like it's just not the Redskins. So everybody's been thinking the Chargers have been good for years. Everyone's always their dark horse. And the Bengals, no, they, they're not the best organization. Um, but there is some offensive weapons, and they did invest a little bit in that offensive line. Should be getting better. He's got some weapons. And Burrow's just the number one overall pick who had the best 
offensive production maybe ever out of a quarterback in college. Uh, so a little different between him and Dwayne Haskins, although Dwayne Haskins did beat him out of Ohio State, which was the reason why he was at LSU. Um, and then I do like Ron Rivera. I really do. I think it's a good culture changer for this organization. I just don't know if I necessarily agree. Listen, I get that you're bringing in Kyle Allen and that's your boy. But, like, I guess for me it's like, no, Dwayne Haskins certainly hasn't been good. And does he deserve to start? I don't know. Maybe not. But you spent a lot of money on him. So maybe let's let him just play out the season. What's the worst that happens? You guys get a better draft pick? Oh, no. Right. Like, just let them learn on the job at this point. Who cares? Like, I get it. Your division sucks. You want to get out there and oh, maybe we can win the division with seven or eight wins. Like, y'all boys aren't any good. You're not winning shit. Maybe you can win some games and maybe you sneak into the playoffs, but who cares? Like, you are not winning a Super Bowl. It's not happening. Right. I get it. You're here to win. I understand that he had a, a, I think it was a press conference today or yesterday where he was kind of explaining himself a little bit more and he was just – Essentially saying that, you know, maybe Dwayne Haskins wasn't necessarily grasping the playbook and wasn't being very coachable and wasn't getting any better. So from that aspect, I can understand it a, a little bit. And I could, I could maybe see it because, you know, you have seen the taking selfies on the sideline and missing a snap. And last week after he did whatever he, did he was doing, he did. That was last year um, with, with like a fan and he missed, he like missed a snap and you know, whatever might not have the best awareness. It might not be, um, uh, apparently he's a super bright kid, but maybe not the most coachable, um, as, as kind of more or less what I'm gathering from all this going out there and, and that Kyle Allen could operate the system a little bit better and they can better evaluate the talent and what they have and what they need. So from that aspect, I guess I can kind of get it, but just let Dwayne just go out there and see what you got. And then next year, if you, if you guys want to get rid of him, get rid of him or bench him and, and draft another quarterback. But like, what is Kyle Allen really given to you? Maybe he gives you a good week here, a good half here, a good game and a half, a good two games, but like, he's not I mean, the answer of you winning going to the fucking Super Bowl here. So what are Did, we talking about? Didn't they bench him last year to, to put in Will Greer to see what they had in him? I mean, like, you know what you have in Kyle Allen, and it's not going to get you where you want to go. You have this really young guy in Dwayne Haskins who, no, he hasn't played the best, but he's definitely made some really good throws and shown promise. Like, he's shown some promise. And, like, I think I think you get a little bit lost in the show. They have a terrible offensive line. Sure. And, and when you have young guys like Joe Burrow, and, and it's the new standard, if you don't come out as a rookie right. and do well, then you're fucked. And, like, let's not act like years – like, it's not that long ago that you would draft a guy like Aaron Rodgers and let him sit for three years. Like, let's, let's not pretend like everybody is super mature. This man just right. turned 23 years old. Like, let's – I just don't understand it because, A, your, your head coach is has zero chance of getting fired. So it's not like it's not like Adam Gase, Good I got to try and throw Kyle Allen in here to win some games so I don't fucking get fired. Like, Rivera's there for the foreseeable future. Like, they're going to give him some years. You know, he got rid of the foosball table. He's changed the culture, you know. <laughs> but, like, let's not act like we're not going to see Dwayne Haskins on the field again this year. Like, Kyle Allen's not going to be your answer. And Alex he's saying Smith. that they could very well see him on the field again, that he might need to sit down and maybe this is good for him and we'll say, hey, I'm coming back a little bit more hungry or maybe it'll break him. And if it breaks him, right. he probably wasn't ready anyway. So I, 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 I understand some parts and pieces of this. But to your point, yeah, I don't think Kyle Allen's the savior, but. I, I don't know. I would just let Dwayne ride. I mean, you got to learn. I mean, may, 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 maybe this will do him some good, but my it, it seems to me like it's just – it's just terrible for your confidence, and which is a huge part of being successful in the NFL is having confidence. And you get that shook, and you're already a little immature. Like, yeah, well, it's not his guy. It's not his guy. Number yeah, one, right. you know, you see what's going on in New York with uh, Daniel Jones, who is probably playing worse than Dwayne Haskins, at least statistically for the most right. part. Same with the uh, uh, Darnold, Sam right? Darnold, right? Like, Haskins are, has better all, stats. All of the above are in bad situations, um, but those guys, uh, well, not not Darnold necessarily. He's not really tied to the GM or the owner, but or the uh, head coach, uh, excuse me. Uh, but Gettleman is certainly tied to him, and Joe Judge isn't tied to Daniel Jones. But he's, you know, that's what they're going to do. They're going to get give Daniel Jones. Maybe a Sam Darnold here. is keeping his job because he's playing bad because Gase would bench him if he was any good. <laughs> So man, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't love it. I don't agree with it. Like, just let my man play. Like, I get it. It hasn't been great. I don't think the Redskins are going to be great. 
Uh, Kyle Allen will probably come in here and be great for this game and make me look like an idiot. But I just, to me, it's not even about what Kyle Allen does. You're not winning shit. So just let my man keep learning. But it seems like they, him and Haskins, uh, the Rivera and Haskins aren't necessarily on, on the best of terms. And, you know, so he's like, fuck it. I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in Kyle Allen, who I know knows the system and is ready to go. And, uh, Dwayne just hasn't, hasn't given me what I wanted. And, hasn't been coachable enough in, in getting better. So I don't agree with it, but whatever. It's the Redskins. It's let not. Them play. But it, but, Just but let them play. It's the, it's the Washington football team. But no, I, Yeah, you're right. They're you're still right. the same team. They're still the same organization, still the same owner. I do kind of want to see that tape they made of those cheerleaders on the <laughs> – they won't release it. Yeah, Dan doesn't want that coming out. Yeah. Anyway. All right, a couple more. Austin Eckler got hurt this week. Um, I will say I was definitely not the biggest Eckler fan. I would have drafted him if he would have hung around a little later than most ADPs, but it didn't happen. There's always uh, somebody I, in the room that's just like, I got to get Eckler. I'm like, you can have yeah. him. But he has looked pretty good. Uh, he's a fantastic receiving back. Um, and I thought I did end up with a lot of Josh Kelly in the third round of Dynasty drafts uh, because – I thought he was a decent player. I didn't think he was anything special, but I thought Eckler's not a guy who needs to be in there for 30 runs between the tackle, and this was a good complimentary piece, and I saw that immediately and scooped up as much as I could. So Eckler out maybe four to six, maybe a little longer. Who knows? Uh, hamstrings can linger, especially with uh, guys like him who are, are twitchy. Um, God, so hamstrings have are really strong. Are hamstrings like – more prevalent this year. I feel like their motherfuckers are really hindering my fantasy teams. Seems, seems like there's just a lot more injuries. COVID and hamstrings. They're out there just wrecking football. Yeah. So, you know, you get the Justin Jackson Kelly, which, you know, probably will be, I guess, kind of similar to an Eckler Kelly thing with, uh, I really like Justin Jackson. Again, I was last year, I was pretty st- pretty set in like, oh, I'm not going to take Eckler. I'll just wait for years later or rounds later to take Justin Jackson because I think they're going to split and Justin Jackson's just as good. Well, he's not, um, but I, I think he is pretty – he's good enough to be a, pa- a good passing down guy. But Josh Kelly also can catch a little bit, um, but he's had some hands- fumbling issues. Had some fumbling issues, which aren't great. Yeah, I mean, he um, had that huge fumble at the end of that first half, which got, gave Brady the ball back inside the 10 with like a minute to go in the second quarter, and they scored yeah. a touchdown, and it totally changed the momentum of that game because I think the Chargers were up like 24-3 to at that point or something like that. and right. Or maybe they had just scored. I don't know. It, it was like it was looking dire for the for the Bucks, and then they and he, it was a – like it wasn't the best handoff, but it was a terrible fumble, and – but but besides that, I mean, the hands have looked pretty good, but then they let Justin Jackson get some run after that, and he's, you know, he caught like a million balls in college. Like, he's a, he's a great receiving back. And I think he'll get yes. some work. And I, I think, you know, I'm with you. Like Josh Kelly, you know, he was in our um, late-round rookie targets video that we put out um, earlier in the offseason. And I think, I think I'm going to just jump to where you're going with this, which is like – I would probably try to flip him now to make a profit. Josh Kelly, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, In redraft, if I can flip him for something decent, I would, but more so dynasty we're talking here of trying to figure out how I could – you know, he was mostly a third-round guy, maybe late second, um, but I'd be trying to figure out a way to get a first-round pick for Josh Kelly right now. He has gotten some work. He's looked just fine. Is he is he a special player? No, absolutely not. Uh, that's not why he was drafted. He went in the third. That's not why I was drafted him. He went in the third round. I thought he was a very good player, and he went into a good situation where he could be the opposite of what Eckler is because he is the opposite of what Eckler is, and it, it has worked out for numerous reasons with with and without Eckler. And now, maybe you can just get a, just a little bit more value on that and figure out a way to flip Josh Kelly and figure out a way to get a first. Or obviously, not, I don't think a, you're getting a, a first a, straight up. Maybe not. Uh, there might be some people who would be interested in that. Um, we've had some patrons ask about it, and that was before this had happened. Um, True. And we said, go ahead and do that for sure. And now that he, Eckler's out of there, you know, you get people who are desperate and they liked Kelly and they saw him getting all this run. And, you know, I'm going to figure out a way to flip him probably for 
obviously, I don't know whose player you want to go after, and I'm not going to give you a bunch of guys to go after, but the first round pick is what I'd be trying to seek out one way or another with Kelly or, or a nice uh, other running back. Or really, it doesn't have to be a running back that I'm flipping him for. Just another really right. good proven player already. Right. Would you would you would you give a two back to get the one, or is that giving up too much? Uh, I, I would try to give a three if I could, and, and just give, give Kelly in a three to try to get a one. Um, see if somebody's just you know everybody's desperate for running backs, especially now. Like you said, everybody's hurt. Need a need another player on your team. I'm gonna do what I can to get the first. I guess if I could maybe get a one and a three and a two to give the two for Josh Kelly. Give the get Josh Kelly. Give back. And a two, give back, get back a one and a three, maybe something like that. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of be where I'm going. I think that's a smart ROI for your dynasty squad. Yeah, just trying to cash in on that quick money. Um, so then the other injury is Nick Chubb probably out maybe a similar time to Eckler. Uh, Dearness Johnson came in and clean up duty and had 13 for 95. Uh, Hilliard also got some run in that game, um, but – We'll see what happens. I did spend some fab on uh, Dearness Johnson because he was available in a lot of dynasty leagues. And why not at this point in the league? Like there's probably, there'll probably be another guy or two who pops up here and there, but for the most part, you're out of guys. So we'll see what Dearness does. If it, if it's anywhere near a split, like Kareem Hunt and Chubb was, I'm not saying it will be, but if it's anywhere reflecting that because they want to run, they're clearly a running team. They're built around the run. Now this is what they want to do. Um, and then get Baker right. off the play action, try to keep Baker safe with the ball. Um, yeah. Yeah. I spent as much fab as I had left anywhere I saw him on the, on the waiver wire because you're, you're, I could almost, I would almost bet the house that you're not going to find another dynasty running leagues. back who's going to, right. We're, we're mostly talking about dynasty here. Um, I, you're not going to find another running back on the waiver wire the rest of the year in any of your dynasty leagues that just rushed for 100 yards. Like, just, Unless somebody did something stupid and it's a short bench and people are dropping running right. backs who get run on the reg anyway. Right. But, um, you know, as far as, you know, Hunt's carries and how they're going to chop them up, and you did mention Hilliard got some run. Hunt's been dealing with an injury of his own, right? And so it, it, didn't, it doesn't look like it when he's running out there. He looks fucking phenomenal. He looks like a monster. He looks not just like big, but like just he just looks amazing. Doesn't look like he has a groin injury, but they did limit it to 11 carries this past week. And they got a big in that game and Dallas made a late comeback, but they were able to work in other guys like Dernish Johnson and, and Hilliard. And so I, I don't think, you know, he, he's he's banged up again this week. He's limited in practice. So I could see them trying to kind of manage Hunt's reps a little bit but I, I like like you said I don't think it's going to quite be a, a Hunt Chubb kind of split with Hunt and Ernest um, but I could see Ernest getting some run um, I'm not right trying to start up Ernest yeah, no absolutely not we're going to let it play out for a week or two right. see if anything happens Who I, we picked him up because bye weeks and all this COVID stuff's going on and maybe you right. can get 10 points out of him right and if you're struggling bench. for that RB2 you know I'm not picking I, him up to be a league winner necessarily right. but who knows who knows right. but he, he did look good on those carries I mean you can't it's hard to rush for 100 yards on 13 carries um, well against the Cowboys it's not currently that's true but. that's true that was awesome Cowboys suck. yeah that's great <laughs> NFC East sucks. That's great. Yeah, spectacular. <laughs> Fuck them all. No, all right, let's get to the main event here. And uh, we're going to do some rookie re-ranks here coming up. And this guy will certainly be a part of it. But I wanted to talk about him because it seems like he's, you know, there's a, just keeps building and building every week. And, you know, we've, we talked about him off the jump in the season, maybe the first podcast we did. Uh, we're going to talk about James Robinson here and what you should do with him, uh, whether you should be selling or holding um i'm not obviously if you're selling somebody's buying um i'm not sure that i'd be in the buying market of robinson currently um but he's an interesting guy we're gonna do like i said do, we're gonna do the re-ranks in a week or probably two weeks or so and have a show of rookie re-ranks where they are right now where we got them have a good time with it and a little sneak peek antonio gibson number one over there what not over here but over there uh oh no, uh -oh, over there? Probably not, but I mean you're gonna have to tune in to figure it out. Yeah. Um he's yeah, we'll save it. Um <laughs> so James Robinson, just to get you. Did you know he had less uh carries and receptions. Yeah, yeah. 33 Sorry. Mario carries. 
James Robinson, uh, my bad. James Let's Robinson, give this man just to familiarize dude. yourselves with him, he's 5'10", 220, coming out of Illinois State, 22 years old. Um, they Coming into the season, it was going to be a committee after they cut for Fournette. Um, they wanted to use the Zigbo. They wanted to use Armstead, and James Robinson was kind of the guy who was – I'm not saying the odd man out of that, but just wasn't the known name. Nobody like I didn't. I'm not going to pretend like I knew anything about James Robinson. Like I, I knew nothing about James Robinson at all. Um, and right now he's looking like a pickup for anybody who had late rookie drafts. If you drafted him in the late third, fourth round, or it was your first week of Fab pickups, like he looks like an apps. He does look like a league winner currently. Um, whether it was redraft or uh, dynasty, we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to be basically dynasty because that's what we do. In redraft, I'm probably holding him and just seeing if I can win the damn league with him because currently he is the RB6. He's averaging 19 points a game. Um, and yards per route run, according to um, – what's his name? Which website? is probably the most important stat, right? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't, who knows? Uh, it's the A dot. My bad. What's Matt Kelly's website's uh, player profiler? Player profiler. Um, according to player profiler, he is yards per route run number two uh, at 2.64. Um, and then the yards per reception number one at 11.5, which Alvin Kamara has uh, much more receiving yardage, but apparently his yards per route run are better. He, st- uh, for- he sucks. Tied for 12th in attempts. So there's a bunch of guys tied for 8th and then a bunch of guys tied for 12th in that area. Um, he's got 60 attempts. He's 8th in yard rushing yards, 285. Um, and then 4th in total yards, 446, 161 rushing yards or receiving yards. Sorry, 446 rushing yards with 161 receiving yards behind only Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, and Dalvin Cook. Um, so there's a lot of chit-chat about this guy out there. And I think the general consensus is sell. That's where we were uh, when we came in here is like, Hey, you get, you get this guy for nothing. Who knows if he's really any good. Uh, I know big Co's not here. He sold him for a second and Noah Fant before the season started. Cause he Love picked it. him up uh, last pick settle. of the draft. Settle, right. settle, settle, settle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I mentioned there, there was Armstead and a Zigbo ahead of him who were getting all the first team stuff, but you know, I haven't really heard anything about these guys coming back. I can't find, I've sur- I scoured the internet yesterday trying to figure out if there was at least any rumblings. Now, maybe next week it's like, Oh, these guys are coming back. I don't Is know. Is Reichwell still on the COVID list? Yeah. He needs what Trump has, man. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what's going on. It said, and then like when you, it's like cryptic messages from uh, Marone when he's, he's going to be out a while, a while. <laughs> Um, so I don't know exactly what's happening there, but for the most part, he has swatted away Chris Thompson, who was which was with Dre Gruden in Washington, which is huge because Chris Thompson and Jay Gruden have a love affair. They might swing with each other's wives. I'm not sure, uh, but there was that love ran real deep. Um, Chris Thompson has not looked like the uh, the same guy. Obviously, he's 30 and had a bunch of injuries. That's the um, classic Robinson, where uh, the player is caught sleeping with the coach's wife, but the coach likes it and wants to watch kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, Chris, proceed. Um, so, Stop really, you're looking, you're looking that if, if Zigbo and Armstead do come back, if he could do the same and kind of thwart away uh, those two guys from his workhorse role, because that's what he is. He is getting workhorse usage right now. I read all those numbers to you. Um, he is absolutely crushing it in, in all sort of – there's not – there isn't too many backs left in the NFL who are getting the treatment that he's getting, um, which, you know, Leonard Fournette got in the system last year now as a different head coach and a different offensive coordinator, obviously, or a different offensive coordinator, not a different head coach. Um, but this offensive line is playing pretty well. Like, I went back and watched all the tape. Uh, I watched a couple of all 22s, uh, not every game, but some of them. Uh, I thought the offensive line was playing uh, really well or at least pretty good. Um, but really, is like the Jags, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, is the Jags offense, we were like, oh, we're kind of interested. But was it kind of a little bit of a Fugazi? They've been on the schneid a little bit. A lot of talk about, well, it's negative game scripts, and, you know, this is what's going to be the Jags, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. I mean, you know Minshew wants to keep winning, but these negative – or keep going as hard as he can. These negative game scripts really hasn't stopped him in the last two matchups. He's been very good 
with negative game scripts in the lab. They haven't gone away from him um, in any of those. And obviously, um, he's doing well in the in the receiving game, so that'll keep you in there. The red zone attempts are something that you know you might start to worry about. Can this Jags offense keep moving the ball? Um, he's he doesn't rank very well in that area right now. He's only got five attempts inside the twenty, two attempts inside the ten, and one attempt one attempt inside the five. Um, so those aren't super great numbers. Uh, like some of the better guys are up in the 15s and 20s uh, from from the 20 and then the 10s in the 10. Uh, so those aren't the best numbers ever um, in in that range, especially for how well Robinson's doing. So that could be a little bit of cause co- for concern. You like to think Visca's Laviska Chenault's gonna you know c- continue to to develop because he looks really good with the ball in his hands and DJ Chark looks like the real deal. And when he's out there, he he commands a decent amount of that offense. Um, right. So, uh, the film for me, the, oh, like I said, the old line looks really good in general. James Robinson seems a little quicker than fast. The straight line speed doesn't seem to be crazy, uh, but he gets what's blocked for him. And he does have the ability to make somebody with a subtle move miss in the backfield. And he, he can also create a little bit out there in space. Um, from what I've seen, he has pretty good hands. He's made a couple of catches where he had to go down and get things. Um, and he usually catches him and hits him in the hands. He runs pretty hard. His yards after contact um, necessarily don't say that, but that's not what I see when I watch him. It's much He runs a lot more physical and, and breaks some tackles uh, from what my eyeballs can see, which I know people don't like that. There's no way that the yards, per, yards after contact in my eyes, it's got to be the yards after contact. Um, he certainly isn't special, um, but with this kind of usage, he's good, and he's, not, he's, he's slightly above average, I would say. He, he does everything well. Uh, or everything good he's not great at anything like we talked about this with, with Damian Harris who was another guy who broke out a little bit this week in his first action he was sure. always a guy who was who was always really good at a bunch of things at Bama but definitely wasn't great at any one thing and I think that's what you got from James Robinson here um, it's just a matter of moving forward do you think that they're gonna you know have a committee of some sort like I mentioned like there's not a whole lot of teams in the league that don't have a committee of some sort and uh, he was an undrafted free agent, so maybe they stick with him, but there'll probably be another guy or two in the mix who who eat in to what he's doing. And it's it's the Jags overall. So, like, what are your general sentiments on, you know, you keeping this guy? Are you selling him? What are you doing? Because, honestly, right now, I'm pretty undecided on what to do. Like, I, part of me kind of just says, fuck it, just keep the guy. You got him for nothing. He looks pretty good. I don't think in the in the next three or four weeks, if you decided, hey, my team's not going to make it, or hey, you know, I'm seeing a couple of things that I don't love, that you still won't be able to get similar value to where he is right now. I'm not saying going into next season he's going to be draft. Like, there's no reason that he's going to be the RB six next year, or that nothing that leads me to believe that he'll be this good next year, and and nobody else to to take anything from him. Um, so in that regard, yes, you should probably get something. But if he can help you win this year in this crazy year that we're having. Uh, might be worth something. And then maybe maybe even if you keep him before you get too deep in the offseason and too many things develop, you could probably even still sell him if he was cheap and finish the season all right. Yeah, I mean... I'm sorry, I just took up a lot of time and space there. Yeah, there's a lot a lot that you said that, uh, that, we, that I want to touch on. And um, I agree with a lot of the things you said. Um, I think that, you know, definitely is passing the eye test. He's, he's above average player. He runs super deliberate. He gets downfield and he gets what's blocked and he does it quickly, you know, not, not necessarily fast, but it's quick. Right. And yeah. there's no nonsense. There is a little wiggle. I think the hands are really soft. They're sticky. I mean, it, the ball just, you know, when you watch Rojo catch it, it's like, oh, just come on, get that ball. But when he catches it, it's just, it sticks in there. Um, And I, you know, he, he's looks soft really, hands, like you said, I like right. That. Soft hands. He looks really dependable in pass protection. He's he's standing his dude up. Um, he's he's also busting off from pass protecting when he's not having anybody to, and he becomes an outlet. He's running a fair amount of routes out of the backfield. He's catching everything that throws with him. He seems to actually be thriving with the negative game script because that's when he's piling up these PPR catches, you know. And then you're seeing the upside when he's busting off touchdown runs. And I, you talked about those balls inside of the five. You know, I, I think he converted them. Um, when he does get down there, um, he's, he scored a fair amount of touchdowns and he scored from further out. Um, you know, get Chris Thompson out of there. You know, he looks much better than Chris Thompson with the ball in his hands. 
You know, yeah, this he, was he, this was I, Robinson's biggest uh, percentage uh, used. I think this this week at least snap share and really has uh, see, like you said swatted away some Chris Thompson. Yeah, like I don't want to tackle James Robinson. That man, like one of his best attributes is he finishes with power. Huh? Yeah, and he's an undrafted free agent. That man's hungry. Right. Right. And 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 to the Jags' credit, they played some really good teams. Um, they were without Chark for one of those games, which te- definitely changes the, the 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 makeup of that offense because he's he is so fast and can stretch. Well, they the haven't they haven't played great teams. I mean, played the Bengals and the Dolphins, and but the other two that they played they, were decent. Indy, the first game, they got crushed stat wise, but uh, which Indy might be the best defense you know conglomerate right now. Um, sorry, go ahead. And then I can't remember who who the other team was that they played, but that was another decent team. Um. So yeah, I'm drawing a blank right now too. There, you know, I, I'm not worried about the negative game script per se. I, I'm not worried about Divine Ozigbo or uh, Raquel Armstead. I mean, he's running yeah, like, too well. He's playing really well. Why? Why? You know, I'd like to give the Jags some credit here and just say just stick with Robinson, which we've at least seen them say, "Hey, we're basically sticking with Lenny last year." At least the head coach was. Right. Um, so I mean, you've got this player that you didn't pay anything for. If if you're a contending team and you've got a good squad around you and you've had, you know, maybe you've had a few injuries at running back and maybe you're plugging him in as your second running back every week and you've gotten him surrounded by, you know, maybe a stud quarterback and some stud wide receivers and a good tight end and you're just you're waiting for, you know, one of your running backs to come back or something like that and you're rolling with James Robinson, like I can't be mad at you for keeping him and just rolling with that, you know, because this is – these are – these are the players that help you win. When you pick up somebody like this in a later round of a rookie draft or in free agency or something like that, it just totally can change. It usually takes one of these kind of guys to win. Right. So I can't be mad at all if you want to hold and ride this this wave out because I do think it's going to be pretty decent for the rest of the year. Maybe he's not going to finish as the RB6. I don't think that keeps up. I don't know that he's going to no, score as many touchdowns. I think I saw touchdowns. somewhere that offensively they might have the fifth easiest – schedule but i'm not a high i, I didn't and that write it shit down. changes man he, yeah he, he i, I agree knows what's i don't gonna happen right. and so um i don't i don't see him going anywhere and the fact that he's catching so many balls and looks so good both in pass protection and catching the ball and running routes you know i don't see the floor going anywhere so that's really uh that's really something to hang your hat on and then he, it seems like there is a two touchdown ceiling in 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 the cards as well so loving what I'm seeing from him. If you're not though, if you're if you're not a contender at all, sure, a uh, yeah, good call. You know, yeah, I think I think the smart move because I don't see this. I don't see him being the long term. You know, I just he's not a special guy. He could be. He could be. He could be a, a good uh, a David Montgomery for your team, who you know you're getting ten points every week out of. But I'm not sure he's going to keep up this workhorse usage. Uh, kind I don't of think player. he's and I'm just, as good at, at I'm running just, back as David Montgomery is. I'm just using a lot of people David are Montgomery that statement, but well, I'm just um, saying like the the uh, amount of you know somebody you can count on for an RB two production later, but you right now you could trade him for more uh, right. than that. Right. I think the smart long term dynasty move is to is to cash out on your James Robinson stock. Um, we're going to, we're going to bring up uh, in the next segment, some buys and we're going to talk about some guys whose stock is kind of down right now that we still like and would, would be down to invest in. And like, if I could, if I could package him up to get a couple, get one of those guys or, or, or get a decent player for him, or, I mean, I guess you, I mean, if we were talking about trying to get a first for Josh Kelly, then you're going to need to get more than that for James Robinson. Right. But I don't know that you're going to get more yeah, than I mean, a first for James Robinson. Yes, yeah, so if I'm a bad get a, team, if I'm a bad get a team, first. I'm definitely looking for a first. I'll but take. Are a you first. looking for more than that, or you would take a first? I would take a first. Yeah, I, I think I would take a first as well. But like I said, if I, if I'm competing and and playing well, like I, I'm probably just going to hang on and ride this out for a little while. And if it's, you th- you see your season maybe going down the hill a little bit, or maybe you finish the season, went to the playoffs, you lose. I think you'll still have some opportunity to sell James Robinson or you got to, you know, you got to stay active and early and try to give, get somebody James Robinson before too much happens. Cause uh, you know, 
And uh, who the fuck knows? Maybe they just go on and say, hey, we got James Robinson. We got plenty of other issues. We're, we're not even addressing the running back. And next year we could be saying fucking James Robinson should have kept him. Right. I just think you've seen too many flashes in the pan at running back yeah. to not sure, for just sure. try I mean, and cash out, you know? 100% uh, agree. Because he's not I like just, a special talent with a bunch of draft capital behind him who people love and is going to keep getting opportunities even if something were to happen, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, winning, winning I'd keep and, and ride it out, see how it goes, losing 100% uh, sell. So, Let's uh, let's move on to the last segment. I got a couple. Not, not going to go crazy here, but just got some. You know, maybe buys or sells. I don't really have too many. Um, I think Jay Wayne, you got a couple. I, I'd just be saying, I, I didn't get too involved in this this week. Uh, I had a, a decent amount of stuff going on, but Preston Williams was one guy that just really stuck out to me. Of you know, I, I'd be trying to to buy him for cheap right now because uh, there's a lot of talent and ability there, and he just hasn't been getting targeted. <laughs> He's, we're waiting for the one year kind of come back from the ACL. And, you know, before I give up on Preston, quote unquote, I got to see this offense with two out there. Um, so right now, you know, again, we talk about it all the time. Uh, dynasty uh, virtue or uh, patience is not a virtue in uh, in dynasty that a lot of players do do very well with. So it's crazy. Cause be, yeah, you're, it's a hundred percent right. Do, patience is not a dynasty virtue. And it's crazy to me because Basically, having some patience is why I got into Dynasty. It's like yeah. I can wait on someone like Preston Williams, who is a, a big, physical, freak of an athlete kind of guy who could, who could turn into right. a number one type dude. And you saw when he can get, when he can get a, a decent amount of target share, how valuable and how good he can be, like you saw down the stretch, and at times in the beginning of the season with Josh Rosen. Right. And, and, when, and, and he's scoring touchdowns, but that's his only catch. And so he's still showing right. you flashes. He's showing you like, oh, shit. I can and he has been getting team. open if you go back and watch the game. Right. Just haven't been thrown. Like, right. and, it, and again, when quarterbacks change, every quarterback kind of ends up finding, you know, maybe, maybe it'll be like Tom Brady and he distributes it all over the field, too, of that is. I'm not comparing the two to each other. I'm not saying two is going to come out and be Tom Brady. I'm just saying right now. He's seeing the field and getting it to everyone. Maybe that'll be Tua. But when quarterbacks do change, there typically is a guy or two who are their guy. And when Rosen was out there, regardless of how bad it was, Preston Williams was getting dominated with some targets. And we've seen it a million times. Quarterback switch went from this guy to this guy being targeted. Uh, so just be aware of that. Yeah. yeah. Who you got, I'm, Jay Wayne? I'm always looking for players like that who I know are talented – and are, are really good They and, and have shown me in the past that they're good. And then, you know, he's coming off a torn ACL. So it's like Adrian Peterson rushed for 2,000 yards after coming off a torn ACL. That means everybody must be good coming off a torn ACL. It's like yeah. maybe maybe he isn't quite right. And that, and that's that, you know, he, he did tear it later in, in the year last year. Right. And, and he, you know, and he's a, and he big was a cat. rookie he's last five. year. Like he's huge. He's young. He's raw. He's talented and athletic. And he's shown flashes. And he's down right now. He's not scoring points. He's not getting targeted. And he's not scoring like a bunch of points. That's when you got to pounce on these guys who have him on their roster, but necessarily aren't watching the Miami Dolphins game and don't know what's going on out there. They just don't like, see him being open. Preston Williams, he's like, killing me. Right. I got let's ship him out. Let me get something for him. Like that's when you got to pounce. So uh, I love that. Um, another guy similar to, to this situation. Now he does have a lot of hype behind him and it's not like these are super cheap guys, but like JK Dobbins right now is someone that I'd be trying to go spend some money to get because he hasn't blown up and, and they're there. It's kind of a headache what they're doing in that backfield. With between Gus Certainly. Edwards and Mark Ingram and 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 J.K. Dobbins. Which, by the way, right now Gus Edwards greater than Mark Ingram. Put that on Twitter. <laughs> Gus looks great. Uh, Mark looks just fine. Mark's getting the touchdown. Yeah, yeah no, Mark looks fine. I'm just so he, he he's pulling it through for you. Um, and Mark and Catch, they just they got it rolling, and they don't need it to lean on any one guy. And uh, maybe may, maybe they maybe they do lean on a little bit more this week because it seems like Lamar's banged up some. But just seeing this, the overall stat line, like it's you can't start J.K. Dobbins right now, and that simple fact means that his value's got to be a little bit down. Like the owner's like, "Damn it, I should have sure. I should have taken one of those wide receivers instead of Dobbins yeah. in my rookie draft." I'm taking C.D. Lamb, right? 
or or Acres because Acres is getting what when he was in there was you know they want to give Acres the ball they're not giving J.K. Dobbins the ball right or I mean fucking Justin Jefferson or Ayuk looks awesome um, take Antonio Gibson Antonio Gibson Higgins is balling out so like you know I could see them being down on J.K. and his 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 uh. His value has to be down a little bit. I'd go inquiring about some yeah, J.K. Like Dobbins. Get me same some exact JK. thing. Same exact thing with DeAndre Swift. Um, it's a little tougher because he did just score a touchdown this past week and catch some balls. And the week before that, he had like one target for one catch in nine yards. That yeah. was probably the week to do it. But still, well, it's the Lions. They'll have more weeks like that because right. it's the Lions, and it's a bye week. And they could have that. You know, they probably know how long Patricia's going to last. They probably, you know, you probably started J.K. Dobbins the week he got you one point nine, and then you benched him the week he got you sixteen. And so you're you're probably frustrated. You see what they're doing with Adrian Peterson. I, I believe in the talent. I would st- I would st- I would be trying to go get me some some uh, DeAndre Swift here on a, on a on a on a slight discount. Because like these that. guys haven't come out and just crushed. Um, same thing. Jonathan Taylor's not doing what people think he should be doing. They're giving Hines touches. They're giving Hines red zone touches. Yeah, a lot of lot of what's wrong with Jonathan Taylor? What's going on? Right, nothing. We, just I hear, relax. I hear patrons asking that. I see it on Twitter. It's like the that sentiment alone is like, well, maybe I should go try and get some JT somewhere. You're gonna have to pay for these dudes because they're highly touted guys with draft capital that had a ton of hype behind him, but the hype was real, we believe, and it's only a matter of time. And that's this is we're playing on the on the on the uh, patience thing of these other owners who just get impatient and get down and even if they're like you couldn't trade for Jonathan Taylor after week one, going into week two, you couldn't trade for Jonathan Taylor. And now he's had the role to himself for two weeks and yeah. People are like last week. Wilkins, why is Wilkins out on the field? Why is this guy out on the field? Why is that? I, mean, I, I don't know. They fucking gave Naheen Hines the ball on fourth and one. Like what the Col- what the fuck are the Colts doing anyway? I mean, I haven't seen a ton of Colts action this year, but like I saw the fourth and one attempt from Naheem Hines, and I'm like, what? And it was like on the two yard line or something. I'm like, what the fuck are y'all doing? What yeah, are y'all I'm doing? Not, fourth I'm and one, sure. you're not gonna give it to Jonathan fucking Taylor? But yeah, and he's a, and he's a guy who needs to be in there and and get his his carries consistently, in my opinion, and just keep getting better. He isn't seeing the field super great right now, uh, Jonathan Taylor. There are, there are some plays that he's he's not seeing it super great, but he's also a rookie and he needs he needs those those reps. And he's clearly the best talent you have. So I don't know if the if the Colts are just like, hey, we're down some receivers, we're going to rotate these backs, try to keep them fresh. It's a long season. We got a good defense. And then eventually let JT do his thing. I don't know, but I would. 100%, I don't know. I'm, all, I'm always trying to get JT. So seems like there's a like tiny that. little open window too with that. Um, I think I come on here every week and say go Dave by David Montgomery. This might be the oh, last that's week I go tell down. you to do that. Nobody that's likes thumbs down. Nobody likes David Montgomery, but I still would be down to buy some cheaper David Montgomery. Um, Michael Gallup is a guy that comes to mind when, when looking at, at, at what the guy looks like on the field. He's so big. This dude is a huge stud. And he's just not, he's just not getting it right now. Um, they're 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 it's, it's the Amari Cooper show and it's the CD. Yeah, Lamb where are all my Amari? I haven't heard anybody hating on Amari Cooper. It's so weird. Where yeah. are they at? Where yeah. are they? Yeah, they're uh, mm-hmm. they're eating crow. Um, yeah, but but well, Gallup Amari is Cooper a, will be injured next week, and they'll be like Amari Cooper sucks. Sucks right. And Gallup uh, will be a stud. Or he'll get hurt and get you a zero, yeah, and and then they'll be mad at Amari Cooper, um, but but Gallup's a stud and he's not getting the the targets right now. But I'm I'm betting on talent there, and I'd be down to acquire some some cheap Michael Gallup, and then super cheap, um, super super cheap Justin Watson. He's inactive tonight, but you know these Bucks wide receivers are struggling for someone to go to, and they went to him a decent amount last week. Yeah, it wasn't anything crazy, but um. He he had some hype behind him. He's a really raw kind of guy too. And so in Dynasty, you know, he's probably out there on some waivers, even on on your short bench leagues. And mm, um, oh, for sure. in a deeper league, it probably wouldn't take much. You know, just throw a fourth out there or something. Yeah, he might. I mean, him. depending on how deep it is, he right. might even be out there on those. I, I did right. see just Tyler Johnson just had a nice uh, nice play uh, earlier in that Bucks game that's on right now. So Scotty Miller could get a fucking target. That'd be great. Yeah kept him on the bench this week i had to fire him up let me get that under dog let me get that under (laughs) under 45 holler at your boy all right we'll see you next time on the super terrific fantasy hour 
Big Co should be back. Oh, we got a guest next week. Uh, Dynasty Depot starting a little thing up with FFPC and for some orphans. So make sure you tune in with that. We'll tell you all about it. He's going to join us. We're going to uh, uh, party and bullshit. Shout out to Notorious B.I.G. We'll see you next week. Peace.